Hey guys, it's Max. We just got in the brand new Apple M1 powered MacBook Air. And in this video, we're not only gonna take a look at different benchmarks, we're gonna test out thermals, but we're also gonna do things that other channels haven't covered. We're gonna run some terminal commands to see the CPU frequency and the temperature, test the external temperature. We're gonna do some x86 apps and see how those run using Rosetta 2 and much more. And now let's go ahead and do our signature quick unboxing. Now I have to say that we kind of told you guys so, Vadim has been making Apple Silicon videos ever since WWDC and he found out so much great info for us. So if you guys have enjoyed those videos over the past few months, give this video a like to show Vadim your support. Let's open this thing up here. So as I set this up, I want to let you guys know that we're going to be comparing this MacBook Air to the previous one in a bunch of different tests, including battery life as we run different benchmarks, thermals, speakers, microphones, webcams, all of that stuff. So make sure you guys are subscribed. You guys have those notifications enabled. Let's go ahead and get started with Geekbench 5. As you guys see, this is the base model MacBook Air with eight gigs of RAM. I'm gonna go ahead and hit run. And one thing I wanna comment on right away is that this thing is really cool to the touch. I barely feel any warmth here. And I was just outside with cold hands. With the previous 2020 MacBook Air, as soon as I downloaded and installed all the programs like I just did, the fan was actually ramping up already and it was quite warm. And we have our score and wow, <laughs> my mind is blown. Vadim hyped it up, but he wasn't wrong. Our single core score here destroys every Apple computer and even the brand new 5950X, which has a shocking single core score. And as far as multi-core score, this $999 MacBook Air or $899 actually beats out the very best 16 inch MacBook Pro with the 2.4 gigahertz i9 processor. That's at least $2,700 you have to spend compared to $999, that is insane. Now, before I see if we can get a readout on the sensors and the temperature and frequency, let's go ahead and switch over to the graphics. As you may know, this base model has a seven core GPU, not the eight core, which you can buy for more money. And that actually comes in on the 13 inch MacBook Pro and the Mac mini. So we'll see what we get. All right, and once again, this is crazy because this is the lowest, slowest M1 chip and graphics that there ever will be. We got a score of 18,881. And to put that into perspective, Intel's new XE graphics that we were very impressed by, that score is roughly 15,000 on the highest end chips. They have slower ones. And then the 16 inch MacBook Pro, that score is about 24,000 or so. So this thing with a seven core GPU is getting close to that. I am very impressed and I can't wait to test out the higher end models. So this is interesting. I'm trying to install Lightroom so we could test out the X86 emulation for photo editing and it's telling me to install Rosetta. So it looks like it's not natively installed, it's there. It's actually downloading it, which is interesting. That was quick, we're installed. Bam, your regular Intel base apps are working. Here's Lightroom Classic, let's hit install and we get a pop-up saying it's the Intel version, that is fine. They do have a beta of Photoshop for Apple Silicon and we'll test out the beta compared to the regular one in our next comparison. And now let's get into thermals. I wanna see if I can get some of these sensors reading out to us and nothing. <laughs> so, and now for ISAT menu, I'm seeing my CPU usage. Let's go ahead and open it up. I'm seeing graphics usage, no memory yet, but processor is working. Let's go ahead and open up terminal and try that out. So it looks like we have some info here. We can get GPU, CPU usage, some frequency, but unfortunately the command for the CPU temperature is not working. That's okay, we have some other methods. So let's go ahead and run our Cinebench R23 and we'll see what kind of throttling we get here. Now I'm gonna do this test a little different compared to some other people. I'm not gonna do the 10 minute test just yet. We're gonna start off just with a single test and we're gonna loop it multiple times manually. That way we can actually get to see the first score, the second score, the third score, and see how much of percentage of performance we lose as time goes on. We're about two thirds done with the first test and we're still at roughly about 28 degrees Celsius at the hottest part, right above the F3 key. Now, as far as frequency, it looks like it's changing a little bit now. We're down to 2800. 
It started off at about 3000, so we're looking at 2767. Of course, the system is completely silent. There's no fans whatsoever. Now it's looking like we're at 2650 megahertz or 2.65 gigahertz, and the wattage is at basically 10 watts, so it's limited right there. Our first test is almost done. We're gonna see the score and restart. 7401 is our first result. And we did see that it actually was throttling a little bit close to the end of the first test. We're almost done with the second run here and it looks like we're at 2.46 gigahertz now and the wattage is at 8.3 watts instead of 10. So obviously we see that the frequency is dropping down, basically 2.45 gigahertz after the second run. So 67.35. And after the second run, it looks like we are at about 34 degrees Celsius. So we are getting some more heat now. Still definitely not bad, but the people that said that this thing doesn't throttle for a long time, well, if we take a look at the numbers, we could see that it does throttle. Now, another thing I have to mention is that the old MacBook Air, which we'll be comparing in tomorrow's video, that one would hit 100 degrees almost instantly. Like 10 seconds after you run it, you're already at 100 degrees. The fan starts ramping up, which there was a fan in there, and then it just gets loud and stays really loud and very hot. Six runs almost done. It's interesting that the wattage actually went up to 7.4 now, so it looks like it's cooling itself down with the lower wattage. And as far as frequency, we're looking at 2.38. So it's staying right around there and our score is 6384. So it stayed, actually got a little bit higher than the fifth run. So this is the end of our CPU thermal limitations here. And it looks like we're now at 35 degrees. So before we look at gaming, let's look at our final thermal throttling and overclocking results. We started out with 7401 and 2.65 gigahertz. So it did drop from three gigahertz. And the next run was 6735, then 6653. 65.99, 63.13, and then back up to 63.84. So realistically, from the best performance you can expect, all the way down to the worst, the difference there is roughly 15%. Not as big of a difference as we expected when we found out that this machine was fanless. And then it goes from 10 watts at full performance down to about 7.2. Um, at the minimum. Now I also want to comment on heat. I just picked up this laptop and it is warm on the bottom, but it is nowhere near as hot as the previous MacBook Air with an Intel CPU was. That thing was burning at the bottom. And then as far as the top temperature here, let's test this one more time. We're looking at 33.3 right now, and the highest I saw it hit was about 35, so barely any change on the top. That is awesome. I went ahead and averaged all of those runs, and I got 6680 average with throttling accounted for. So that is very impressive. And just to put it into perspective for you guys, the base 16 inch MacBook Pro scored 7043 in, uh, I think probably was three or four different runs, just the auto 10 minute run. And this thing has a six core processor. It's running at 4550 watts. It has dual fans and it scores roughly 5% higher than this MacBook Air with thermal throttling. That is crazy. Now let's get into gaming. We're gonna start with heaven here. As you guys can see, it is bouncing here. Wait, was that it? <laughs> so that was Rosetta translating the app. And I thought it was gonna take about 20 seconds or so, but that was just a few seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the Extreme preset. So this is interesting. The benchmark is running. We're getting our FPS counter here. Um, the results are impressive, but we're not seeing anything on the screen. That could be because OpenGL isn't working anymore. Um, so we'll see what the results show, but I don't think we're gonna be able to go off of this test. So we do have our score, but first I wanna point out that our GPU was completely maxed out. You see, it's still running in the background like Heaven does, 99% usage. And as far as wattage here, we're seeing right around seven watts. And the most I saw was 7.9 watts, which seems to be the maximum for this GPU. Now that is crazy because a lot of the other dedicated graphics uh, chips inside the 16 inches, those run at 50 watts and the, just the performance per wattage is absolutely insane. Now, the score that we got was 94.9. 
Um, I can't go off of this score. That seems way too high. And we're seeing that we are running virtual Apple, which means that it is being emulated. It's not a native, um, native application. So that, that's very interesting. Let's go ahead and move on. Let's take this to another level. We just downloaded League of Legends. Keep in mind, this is another x86 app. This is not one that's optimized for Apple Silicon. I got worried there for a second. It took about 15 seconds or so until it turned on, and that must have been Rosetta 2. So we're in the game here, and it looks like we're above 100 FPS, went all the way up to 126, 122. Definitely really good frame rate. Let's go ahead and go into the settings and see what we're defaulted to. So it looks like 1440 by 900. Let's go ahead and select the native resolution, which is 2560 by 1600. It's pretty high there. And now we're at 78 frames per second, 77, 76. Still pretty good above 60 FPS. Of course, it's silent because we're fanless here. Let's go back in the settings. We're already at the increased quality settings. The slider is all the way over. Let me go ahead and max out the environment quality the shadow quality, effects quality, everything is maxed out and we're playing at higher than 1440p. And now I'm moving around here, we're seeing 67 FPS, 68, 67, pretty consistent, 64, 63. Ah, let me get out of the way, no. <laughs> I'm trying to look at frame rates. So right there, 51 is the lowest I saw. Now we're still rendering the scene, 59, 57, 62. That's with everything maxed out and we're playing at higher than 1440p. Definitely better than I expected. That is seriously impressive and keep in mind, this is not an Apple Silicon optimized app. This is being emulated under Rosetta and is playing back maxed out settings, nice and smooth. I'm not getting any lag or anything like that, like it is a native app. So it's been over five minutes the Mac is at 32 degrees in the hottest point. So pushing the graphics card to the limit, we're not seeing any graphics throttling and the system is very cool. And of course it's silent instead of being loud with the old MacBook Air. So it looks like as far as graphics, we're not getting any throttling. If you wanna see how the previous MacBook Air performs running this x86 app on an Intel x86 processor, that will be coming up tomorrow in our comparison to the previous MacBook Air. So make sure you are subscribed with those notifications enabled. Now, Vadim really wants to jump in uh, in front of the camera and give his opinion. All right, so I have a 2018 base 15 inch MacBook Pro. I tried playing League of Legends, it's not smooth. It's glitchy, you get drop frames. I had to resort to playing TFT and not actually League of Legends. And I'm just blown away that we're getting native resolution, everything maxed out, getting around 60 FPS. And you have a dedicated graphics card in that yes, laptop. Yes, it has a dedicated chip. chip. And this is under Rosetta. Not even optimized. It's not even optimized for Apple Silicon. All right, now let's go ahead and open up Lightroom and we're gonna take a look at photo editing also emulated under Rosetta. As you guys see, it's bouncing down there. That was 10 seconds right there to do that initial translation. And after that, it's not gonna happen. It's just gonna open up automatically. So here we go. These are 42 megapixel raw images from the A7R3. Um, so these are massive files. Okay, look at that responsiveness right there under Rosetta. Oh my goodness, look at that. <laughs> That is perfectly smooth. I'm not getting any latency at all. Contrast, that's as good as a high-end iMac. Look at that, no difference. Let's go texture. Literally, that is instant, no delay. Okay, so I have to do the brush test. This is where sometimes we'll start having issues. Let's go exposure, let's bring it down. All right, tiny bit of lag there. Okay, now it's better. Dude, this is Rosetta. Let me, un let me, okay, right at the start, a little bit of lag. And this is a b pretty big change to the raw file. It's Rosetta. And then it smooths out. That is very impressive. Um, let's go ahead and, oh my goodness, okay. Now let's go back. Let's go fit. Oops, I wanna get rid of that brush there. What the okay, look at this guy. <laughs> no. Okay, Angelica, when you're editing this, Show the footage from the Surface Pro X. 
um, <laughs> how that was. The Windows version of this, there was extreme lag moving and doing anything. And here it is extremely smooth. And this is the base model MacBook Air without a fan. Okay, so now it's gonna be the real test. We're gonna select all of these images and we are going to export this and we're gonna take a look not only at the time but also the RAM, because this only has eight gigs of RAM. I have my stopwatch ready. Let's go ahead and hit export. Our CPU is maxed out. Looks like the graphics, they were just at 50%, now they're at 20. And I do wanna let you know all 50 of these 42 megapixel raw images do have a bunch of changes on there. So there's a lot of stuff that needs to be processed. We're getting close to halfway done and it's only been a minute and 29 seconds. And it looks like the CPU's maxed out pretty much the whole time. The graphics is about 20%. So if you were considering spending the extra money to upgrade the CPU to get the full eight core GPU, it's not worth it if you're doing photo editing and tasks like these, because even here, it's not close to being maxed out. We're almost done here. I wanted to check on RAM and it looks like we're using 6.6 .6 gigs out of eight. So it's actually not maxed out. The export is almost done. This is crazy. It looks like, okay, there you go, 313. We got four minutes and 43 seconds for the base MacBook Pro. So this is a lot faster. And then the high-end $1,800 one, which Apple is still selling, that got three minutes and 28 seconds. So still slower. And keep in mind that has 16 gigs of RAM in Lightroom does need RAM. And on top of that, uh, Lightroom Classic is optimized for those Intel processors. This is running under Rosetta before it gets optimized. So it looks like if you're somebody that's wanting to buy a Mac like this, you wanna wait for your apps to be optimized, realistically, you don't need to wait. This is the fanless version and it's running faster than the MacBook Pros that have fans and are optimized for Lightroom. Wow, I really was not expecting that. I was expecting to get lag, especially with the brushes. I was about expecting to be slower, but it isn't. And for those of you guys wondering about RAM and if 16 gigs is enough with the high-end option, Man, it looks like Apple's unified memory is running much more efficiently and you don't need as much because the difference between those two high-end and base, it wasn't a CPU difference, it was a RAM difference. In this case, we have eight gigs of RAM and it's faster than both. So my next question is, how much faster is the MacBook Pro to this system? So we're gonna be testing out a bunch of different things. We actually have two MacBook Pros coming, one with eight gigs of RAM, one with 16. So if you guys wanna see our upcoming Apple Silicon videos on these laptops and the Mac mini, click that circle above to subscribe, enable notifications. And if you wanna see another great video, we have it right over there. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Max and we'll see you in the next video.